In this video, we're going to look at how we can solve for optimization problems with more than um, one choice variable, right? So we are going to apply total differentials, matrices, and second derivatives in solving these problems. So what we're going to do is we will examine the turning points, that is to solve for these uh, extremums, and then we will use um, the total differentials and matrices to make a decision on whether uh, the met, uh, turning point is a maximum or a minimum. Right? One major assumption that we work with when we solve optimization problems with more than one choice variable is that both variables are going to be changing simultaneously. So that is why we need to introduce total differentials in the analysis, right? So to see how the concept of total differentials work, we'll start by applying it to a case of one variable that we basically looked at in the previous video, right? So we are assuming that we have got a Z function, which is being explained by X. And then if we are to take a total differential, on that z function, basically what we will, how we will define the, the, the total differential is as dz is equals to the first derivative of the f function multiplied by your dx, right? And then the condition for solving for a turning point is that we have to set that total differential equal to zero. Right. So in this equation, the new equation that we have derived of our dz, we basically have two elements that are multiplying each other. The first one is the first derivative of your x function as well as your dx. So in order for dz to be equal to zero, either one of these two has to be equal to zero. But we know that uh, your change in x, your dx, can never be equal to zero, right? Because your x is changing. So in that instance, it means that for dz to be equal to zero, then the first derivative of x has to be equal to zero, right? So this is now basically similar to how we solved for the turning points or the critical points in the previous example, where we basically had to take the first derivative of our x function, equate it to zero, and then solve for, for x, right? And then now to identify the nature of the extremum, basically to define whether it's a maximum or a minimum, what we did in the previous uh, class was to find the second derivative of the f function, right? So in this instance, we are still going to find the second derivative, but it's for the total differential. Right? So when you employ or you find the second total differential, Basically, what you're going to do is to differentiate again your first total differential, right, with respect to x, right? So we are differentiating the first differential with respect to x again, right? So when you do that, we know that um, we, we basically introduced a second dx into the equation, right? So... On the f function, we are now getting a second derivative of the f function, and then we have to multiply that with another dx, right? So this dx is from the first differential, and then the second dx is from the second differential, right? So just to remove the brackets and multiply it through in this equation, we will see that the second derivative or the second total differential is basically the second derivative of the f function multiplied by dx squared. Right? So from the the the, the the, the two elements that are in your dx function, remember the decision rule for the second derivative is we have to check if it's greater than zero or less than zero for us to conclude for either a minimum or a maximum, right? So we want this second di differential to actually uh, tell, tell us or give us information on whether it's greater than zero or less than zero for us to make a conclusion. All right, so with the two elements that are basically defining our second derivative, we have 
the second derivative of the x function as well as the dx squared. But we know that dx squared will always be positive, right? Because we know dx itself is a non-zero constant, right? So when you, you basically square it, it remains positive. So the decision of whether being of the sign basically relies on the second derivative of your x function, right? So depending on whether that second derivative is less than zero or greater than zero, who we'll now then conclude on whether it's a maximum or a minimum. Moving on now to a case of two variables, right? So now we are assuming that the z uh, function is uh, basically explained by x and y. And then um, for us to find the turning points, we require that your dz be equal to zero, right? To establish the turning points for both x and y. So what you're going to do is to find your total differential dz, right? So to find the total differential dz, you're going to find a partial derivative of your z function with respect to x multiplied by dx, and then you add the partial derivative of your z function with respect to y multiplied by dy. And this should be equal to zero. Right, and um, a different notation to avoid confusion. Instead of writing the partials in as a fraction, we can use uh, your f subscript x to represent your partial derivative of z with respect to x, and then your f sub subscript y for the partial derivative of z with respect to y. Right, and then we substitute that back into the dz equation. Right, and then what we know that is that dx and dy are always positive, right? They are non-zero constants, right? So for dz to be equal to zero, it means now your fx and your fy must be equal to zero, right? So when you solve the partial derivative of your z function with respect to zero, that should be equal to zero, right? And then you can simplify that too to solve for the value of x. Same applies with your y. When you find the partial derivative of z with respect to y equated to zero, you should be able to find the turning point um, value for y. Right. So once we have this, as we already know, finding the first derivative on its own is not a sufficient condition. We also need to find the second derivative for us to be able to define the nature of the maximum extremums, right? So we move on to finding the second uh, derivatives using the total differentials, right? Uh, it's easier to demonstrate this if you are looking through, working through an example. So let's define a z function uh, is x cubed plus 5xy minus y squared, right? We find the first uh, total differential dz, right? So in this case, your partial derivative of z with respect to x is going to be 3x squared plus 5y. And then your partial derivative of z with respect to y is going to be 5x minus 2y, right? And then now to get the second derivative, what we are going to do is we have to differentiate our first derivative total uh sorry our first differentials both x and y we also take partial derivatives with respect to x and y right so if you differentiate the the first derivative or the first partial derivative with respect to x and then you differentiate it again with respect to x you are basically finding this part of the uh, second derivative. Right. So remember, we have to, to do it twice. Right. So we are going to differentiate um, this first uh, partial derivative. You differentiate it with respect to x, and then you differentiate the same partial derivative now with respect to y. Right. So for the first one, you basically define your fx and then you differentiate it again with respect to x, right? And then you also take your fx 
you differentiate it now with respect to, to y. So same applies with the partial derivative with respect to y. You're going to differentiate it now with respect to x, and then you differentiate it again with respect to y. So four new elements are going to appear now in your second derivative, right? The first one, your fxx, where you initially differentiated first derivative with respect to x, and then the second derivative is respect to x. Then fxy, first derivative with respect to x, and then the second derivative with respect to y. Then fyx, first derivative with respect to y, and then second derivative with respect to x. And then fyy, first derivative with respect to y, and then second derivative with respect to y. Right. So if you look back at the two first derivatives, if we differentiate them again, basically where we are finding your fxx and your fyy, we call them direct partials. Right. And then when you do your fxy and then fyx, those two we call them cross partials. So returning to our example, right, we have defined these partial derivatives, right? And then now if we are to take the second derivative, your fxx is coming from your fx function. So you are differentiating it again with respect to x. So it's going to be 6x, right? 6x multiplied by dx squared, right? Because the first time you differentiate with respect to x, you got your first dx. And then when you differentiate it again with respect to x, you get your second dx, so there'll be dx squared, right? The second element is your f y x. So you first differentiated with respect to x, and then you are now differentiating this function with respect to y. The answer is five, right? That's where we get this five. So we've multiplied by your dx dy. dx was in the first derivative, dy is in the second derivative. And then your fxy, first differentiate with respect to y, and now you're differentiating with respect to x. So the answer is 5 times dx dy. And then your fyy, differentiate it first with respect to y, and you're going to differentiate it again with respect to y, which is minus 2, and you have your dy squared. Right. These two, 5 dy dx and 5 dx dy, are the same thing. Right, so we can easily add them up to come up with your 10 dx dy. Right, so your cross partials will always have the same answer, right, which is basically what we note as the Young's theorem. Right, your fxy is equal to fyx. Right, so now we, that we have the second uh, total differential, we still need to conclude or decide on whether we have a maximum or a minimum. Right. So generally, when you have this, the conditions that we impose on the second uh, total uh, differentials, uh, for us to have that um, certainty that you, you, you actually have a maximum or a minimum at that turning point uh, is follows. Right, so the decision rule is basically summarized in this table. So your direct partials have to be less than zero. And then the product of the direct partials have to be greater than the product of the cross partials. Right. If you have got this three conditions satisfied, then you can conclude that you have a maximum. And your dz squared is less than zero. Then if your direct partials are greater than zero, and then the product of the direct partials is greater than the product of the cross partials, then you can conclude that you have a minimum. And the second total differential is actually greater than zero.